is tracking, cool. So I got the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, which is how it's able to track me as I move around. And it seems to be working pretty well, which is kind of cool. Anyway, that's not what the video is about. Um, so I've been recently trying to learn how to play the guitar. By recently, I mean the past like year and a half or so. And I don't know how to play anything whatsoever. So my friend Rohan, shout out Rohan, gave me this guitar to learn how to play with. I've been trying to practice it, but I keep forgetting to never really stick to it. Or we kind of, I mean, like I get motivation to do it for like a week and then I kind of just get off of it and do something else, get distracted. Um, so in order to motivate me to practice more probably and play more and uh, help me learn stuff potentially, I'm going to try to electrify it, right? Make it electronical, um, electronical, is that a word? Le electrical, right? And so my goal is to make it look um, more lit. That's what I'm going to say. So my process is going to be to detect the signal with this piezoelectric uh, transduce transducer. So the way it operates is that it produces a voltage when the disc compresses and expands, right? So that's what, when it vibrates essentially, right? It produces a signal according to that vibration, right? So I can put that to the bridge of this guitar and then I'll have the wires going to this Arduino. And so in the previous video, right, I detected noise with the condenser microphone from the Arduino. And similarly through the analog import, this thing is the exact same thing, except rather than it being vibrations through the air, it's vibrations directly through the wood. I'll probably actually mount this guitar, or sorry, uh, mount this Arduino to the guitar. I feel like putting it directly on here would be cool, but it would get in the way a lot, right? So like no real place to put it, that way it wouldn't hit with my hand, right? Everywhere on the front would be bad. Everywhere in the back would probably also be bad because it'd be rubbing against my stomach or like my chest or something when I'm playing. So I feel like the only place to actually put it where it won't get in the way or hit anything while still be exposed for people to see is probably right here, right? So I 3D printed some parts, but this thing is kind of way too big to fit, so we'll, we'll modify that. The Arduino will probably go here, and then I wanted to also add LEDs to this to make it light up according to the music. But my thinking was to add LEDs here, so I don't know what this is called. I think this is this is the neck of the guitar, right? So that's the bridge. I don't know how necks relates to bridges. This is the, the whole. Um, I'm gonna say this is the head. Let's say let's call this the head. Um, so on the head of the guitar, I'm gonna put LED strips probably here, right? Because this is the area that you wouldn't touch that's front facing towards the audience, right? Um, so that everyone can see the LEDs, um, more importantly, so I can flex better, right? If it's on the side, you can't really flex too hard with it, but if you have it on the front, you can flex really well. Um, I was thinking of adding the Arduino up here, but I feel like that would just get too complicated. Having it close by here would be better, and I can just run wires off the neck to the head and then have the LED strips right there. Um, so use these wire strippers. They're the best wire strippers in the world. Never use the other ones where you have to pull, right? These are... You just, all you do is clamp with your hand, right? So I'm gonna make these leads a little longer so I can solder to them. That's the way it works is you clamp with one side, pull with the other, right? That's amazing. It can cut any gauge wire that fits in here. Uh, let me just actually get some a little more right there because that wasn't long enough. Look at that, perfect. This also has a ability to cut. So you put wire in there and cut stuff really, really well. Um, put that aside, or put it on the floor. You probably, if you're watching this, you probably already know how to do this, but just as a refresher, for helping hands, right, there's two claws you have pretty much right here. I think this should be tracking this right now as well. Oh, good job, okay. So, you put in one wire on one side, you put in the other wire that you want to solder to it on the other side, these two claws, they're just alligator clips. What I usually do is I, um, twist the wires together just to make them stay together while I solder it. Um, usually just tie it together. Sometimes they can poke you and stab you in the fingers, which is really, really annoying. Again, don't ever solder in your room like I'm doing right now. Uh, it's a bad idea and you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, put some solder. Solder is just tin with flux in it. Flux helped it flow onto metal and stick better. Uh, get a good glob that secures it together. It's a pretty bad job, but it works for now and I'm just gonna cover it with heat shrink tubing later. So it doesn't really matter too much right now. Uh, back to the wide angle shot. So now we soldered this stuff together. I'm just gonna tape it real quick. So probably just tape this near the bridge. 
like right about there um, like that that should be fine so right now these are exposed right so these can short circuit which is a big issue oh, here. Okay. so the stuff following me okay cool uh, so electrical tape can also be used when you don't have um, heat shrink tubing to cover wires so they don't short circuit um, you can rip them or but kind of ripping is hard with electrical tape so you kind of just pull it and it just snaps it comes off kind of really dirty but that's the fastest way to actually break it rather than actually ripping it or using scissors and then you just kind of wrap it around here just make sure that the electrical connection that you have is completely insulated from the rest of the environment so that there's no shorts whatsoever again you just take it pull it when it kind of snaps off bring it around town technique technique technique, technique. Okay, that should suffice all right, just make a little loop-de-loop -loop and pull, and your shoes are looking cool. Keep making too many SpongeBob references. Um, over and up, left to right, loop-de-loop, -loop, and you pull them tight like bunny ears or a Christmas bow. Lace them up, and you're ready to go. Um, right, that looks pretty decent, I would say. Is it still tracking me? Okay, cool. So yeah, put it on here for now. It's kind of janky. It's okay. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, let's just tape these wires up in place just to understand where they're gonna be on the guitar that's the majority that's like half of it 50% rounded up majority um, so now I'm gonna have uh, NeoPixel LEDs or the WS 212B whatever eight um, NeoPixel is the like Adafruit version of it. That's like the standard online. I'll leave an affiliate link down in the description as well. I'm gonna put those LEDs up here on the head as I described before. Let's just let's just jump right into it. Uh, let me do a classic here in my garage with my Lambo. Well, you know what's more important than that? Soldering. No. Um, knowledge uh so uh soldering in my room was turning out to be horrible because it smelled awful and was getting too smoky in there never solder in your room horrible idea do it in an open area where there's a lot of ventilation and airflow so i'm going to solder in my garage uh, i'll show you that with the time lapse real quick just wanted to do a quick transition to explain what's happening and why the change the scenery all right so the plan is to put the leds on the neck, or sorry, the head of the guitar. So I'm gonna have some like this, like this, and like that, uh, just to give you a sense of what's happening. Hey, I uh, just did a bunch of soldering, hot gluing, and testing, and the issue that seems to keep coming up is that there's a weird faulty ground connection. So make sure whenever you're soldering these pads that your solder joints are fully uh, 
I guess, stuck together. Right, and also, you notice that I put some hot glue on the solder joints as well, that's so that the pads don't rip off. But even that didn't really fix these problems or help avoid them, right? So if you notice right now, when I plug this in, this is normally, right, you notice that there's weird flickering going on, right, on these two LED strips. It's because this one has a faulty, faulty ground connection between this one and this one. So if I say, you know, I have this ground connected to this ground via this alligator clip, flickering goes away, right? If I can like, unplug it from the battery, put it back in, right? There's no flickering whatsoever. So the, the it's a faulty ground connection coming and you'll see, I'll do a close-up shot like somewhere on the screen. You'll see that I had to re-solder a ground wire from one of these pads to this thing, but then it turns out that this one's the one that's messed up. So I'd probably need to just, re I'll probably just solder a wire from this ground to this ground because they're floating. They don't want to solder the pads directly on the guitar itself. Just make sure that you properly solder everything, test your connections fully, and put some solder, put some hot glue on the solder joints so that they don't break and rip off. Especially with these pads where there's not that much surface area to solder to. Alright, so this is the final product. Well, actually, only for part one. I still want to add some things to it, uh, but this is functionally operational and actually works decently well. So I'll just show you the highlights and uh, just go over everything that I've done so far. Um, the piezoelectric transistor is right here. I covered it in clear tape so you can actually see it because I like the aesthetic of being able to actually see the sensor itself rather than just covering it in tape. See the wires coming down look really clean and nice. Right, they come to the back right here and then go up the side of the guitar right all the way to the Arduino plugged in right into analog zero um, just to read in the analog signal coming in and then we also have on the back we have the LED strip going from the or, or the wires from the LED strip coming down the neck right it looks kind of like a mess right now so I actually plan on covering this with the 3D printed part which I'll design in the next video um, but for now, I just wanted to show you it functioning because this video is getting pretty long as it is. So, just take a random power brick battery, right, uh, that I use for, you know, cell phone charging. You can just use the USB port, right? And you see that there, the LEDs themselves are actually pretty blinding as they are right now. So, the piezoelectric disc is taking in the vibrations of the strings and the guitar. And then these three strips are acting in tandem as volume bars. So, you know, you've seen on like speakers or whatever, you know, volume interfaces, you know, little LEDs going up and down to indicate the volume. I had that being displayed here across each one of them. They're all acting at the same time. And the colors are just cycling rainbow throughout all of them. So you see when I play a note, right, it's pretty bright and actually pretty blinding too. So I plan on adding a dial just to turn, turn down the brightness depending on the lighting in the situation. Indoors it's super blinding, outdoors, you know, you need to turn it up because the sun is also washing out the LEDs. So it depends on how you see it. Um, I'm going to play a G chord, I think. So I've been trying to learn how to play Ed Sheeran's A-Team um, as my first song because it seems like a pretty fun song to play. And I love Ed Sheeran. Yeah, so that's a G chord, I think. But I think he uses a capo. But you can see... pretty well to the music that you're playing just through amplitude alone. So in the second video also I plan on adding a frequency analysis mode. First strip here will just be the lows, second strip will be the mids, and then the last strip will be the highs, and each one will be a volume bar according to those set of frequencies that you play, right? So as you play a higher note, only the, light, the, the last one up here will light up, and then as you play a lower note, only this one will light up, and you know, it can show cool different frequency analysis of it and have different modes. Um, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments for different modes or improvements that I can make for the next video. And so let's just jump into the code. So this is the code for the LED guitar, but only using amplitude. So I just took the NeoPixel, Adafruit NeoPixel code. So if you go download the Adafruit NeoPixel library and go to examples and click on strand test, that's the file that I used. Uh, here, I just modified it to work for my purposes. So if you go to um, the main void loop, you'll see that there's a bunch of different modes that it has built in by default. I only chose to use the rainbow cycle one because that's the coolest one that I like using. And so then we go to the rainbow cycle 
uh, method. And so here we have uh, three variables indicating that this will indicate the lows, the mids, and the highs when I do frequency analysis. Right now, they only refer to the first LED strip, the second one, and the third one. Um, but the same thing for now. And so uh, you, you declare those as the base value of their strip, right? So the first LED strip has eight LEDs, so it goes from index zero to seven. Uh, second one goes uh, has also eight LEDs, so it goes from index eight to 15. And the last one has eight LEDs as well, so it goes from 16 to uh, 23, right? So then we go to the code here. Uh, we go to the part where you modify the color value. So here I want to either turn off the LEDs, which is just setting it to zero, 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 or have it display the proper color value. So here we check to see if the value is in the low range, right? So if it's below eight, um, then only turn on the ones that are greater than, or only, sorry, only turn off the ones, because this is turning it off, only turn off the ones that are greater than the low value, right? So you'll see how this value is adjusted later in the code. The second if statement is if it's between 16 and seven, right? So if it's in the mid range, which is those next set of eight LEDs, check to see if I is greater than the mid value, uh, which is right eight by default at the starting, but can raise higher or lower depending on the volume. And then the third if statement, we have it from 15 to 24. Right, if it's in that range, then um, if it's in that range, it's, it's the last LED strip. So check to see if I is above the volume bar for that LED strip and light it up accordingly. Right, so then uh, this is my running average code. If you remember the last video, I covered how this stuff works. This is just to make the input value as smooth as possible so there isn't much noise on the electrical signal when it's coming in. Um, if you want to do that, if you want to understand how this works, go check out the previous code, or sorry, previous video. Uh, all the code is explained in there, but it's pretty obvious. It just takes a running average and returns it and into whatever you uh, variable you have here. So I check to see if this value is above a threshold, and then I map it between, so the values that are coming in I've measured are between one and 30. So I map that to zero and eight for the lows, right? So take that take that signal value and map it between zero and eight for the lows. So if it the volume level, it goes beyond zero, or sorry, if the volume level you know goes higher, right? The low bar value will be a higher number between eight and, or zero and eight. Right, same with the mid value. If the volume goes higher, it'll be a higher number between eight and 16. And accordingly for the last one, it'll be a higher number for uh, between 16 and 24. Right, so that's how these relate to here. So, you know, going back to this code, we check to see if the, uh, if the pixel that we're currently changing the color of is below eight, right? So it's within the first set of seven LEDs. And then also, if it's above this value, then we turn it off, right? So if it's above that, so if you know if the volume, if it's super loud, then the low value will be mapped to eight, meaning that none of the LEDs will be turned off, and so forth, right? Same with here; it's just the same thing, just a different range in which it operates. So this is how I got the three different uh, LED strips to work in tandem together, and then. The rest of the code is exactly the same as a normal Neo, uh, NeoPixel Adafruit uh, strand test code. The um, only thing I added as well is the running average that I explained before. And so always, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.